babes, Abby here. Welcome back to my channel. Today I am finally going over bobby pin tips and tricks. This video has been highly requested. I feel like I talk about it um, kind of a lot in each video, but if you guys want a dedicated video, you're gonna get a dedicated video. So I'm really excited. I'm gonna be sharing pretty much every single thing I know about the bobby pin. How I store them, how I hide them, how I use them, where I buy them gonna be awesome. So don't forget to subscribe below so you don't miss any future videos. Go ahead and tag all your friends and share this with everyone you know and let's get started. Okay, first things first, you've gotta buy the right bobby pins. When I hear people say that the bobby pin isn't working or they can't get it to hold up their hair, the first thing I think is, are you using the right bobby pin? So I actually have been buying these Medigirth bobby pins for years and years and I absolutely love them. They come like this in a little case like this. These are actually roller pins. My clear case cracked so I'll show you what they look like there's 300 in a pack and you can buy them for eight bucks at Sally's Beauty Supply and you can also get them for ten dollars prices vary a little bit but ten dollars on Amazon and that's typically where I buy them just for convenience I store them in this case typically and I'll just open up the box and pull out just a chunk of these bobby pins and I put them on this little hairpin pal. So I got this on Amazon, I think it was $14, and it's just a magnetic little holder for your bobby pins. So I love it because if I'm taking all my bobby pins out from an updo that I just did or something and there's bobby pins all over the place, I can just run this kind of over the table or over the floor and it just picks them up. <laughs> it's so cool. So this is the hairpin pal. I love it, I wanna get another one. And then I also store my, I'm just gonna show you this since we're kind of on storage right now. This is the Sterilite container that I've been using. I saw this idea from my friend Tara. I'll link her up below. These are awesome. So I got this one from Target. I think it was $7. But I store Savvy's little wet brush. I've got some cute little, what are these, scrunchies, a big scrunchie, some clips. We've got my clear elastics. These are cute little nylon elastics from, everything I think is from the Cat and Jack section. I love the Cat and Jack section from Target. So, um, and then Bobby Pins. And then I have her little detangler right here. And I keep this next to the fridge in a drawer in the kitchen. And then I have one in her bathroom. And we use these things for everything. In fact, you can get them at Target for $7. I found a pack of six though on Amazon, I think it was 35 bucks. They ended up being $5 a case. And now we store like our batteries in them. Savvy has her LOL dolls stored in them. We use them for everything. Okay, now that you know what I buy, where I buy them, and how I store them, I wanna show you guys how to detect a good bobby pin. Honestly, I've been buying these Medigrip ones for so long. I don't know, maybe the drugstore ones are getting better. So I wanna show you how you can figure it out. It's super easy. Honestly, you've just got to figure out how strong it is. You really shouldn't be able to open it with one hand unless I use like my gel mill and dig it in there, then I can open it. But I can't open it with one hand as I'm styling. That means that it's super strong. And keep in mind too that there really are no rules. This is just what I look for, what's helped me, but I'm sure there are a million different opinions out there that will tell you otherwise. So. Just keep that in mind. One other thing that I look for is this little flick right here. It's actually really small. So the ones from the drugstore are a little bit wider and I don't like those because I feel like they're harder to conceal. They also bend a lot easier. So if your bobby pins are bending on you, that means it's a flimsy bobby pin. You know when you're going to do like something and you try to put it in and it bends and you're like, son of a... <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So you want a strong bobby pin. And then I actually like to get pins that match my hair. So they have so many different colored bobby pins right now. You really should be getting one that blends well with your hair. So I go between this platinum color and this bronze color, which is a little bit darker, but they also have brown and black ones too. I feel like this bronze color would be good for redheads. Anyway, this is just gonna help you guys hide the pins a little bit better, and they'll blend so much better into the hair, you'll have just a better experience with pins that match your own hair. Now that that's all out of the way, I wanna show you guys how to get the most out of your bobby pin. Because there is a lot more than just the kind of bobby pins you buy, a lot of it is technique too. So, this is what I do. I hold it with the flat edge on top, and I'm gonna use this little flick. I call that a flick. I just use that little flick at the end to snag a small section of hair and then you're going to snag the section of hair, flip the pin and push it in that way so the flat side is on top. So I'm going to show you what I mean and turn around or show some tutorials if that films better. So I'm going to just take the top layers of hair, you don't need all of this hair underneath and I'm going to 
fold the pieces over. So this piece went over this piece. And where I'm holding it with my finger is where I'm gonna put the bobby pin. The flat side is on top and I'm gonna take that little flick and I'm gonna grab that outside section of hair. So I'm not grabbing all of this, I'm just grabbing the one little section that's holding the rest of the hair down. So I'm gonna grab that section with the little flick and I'm keeping this flat edge underneath, you see underneath this section, and then I'm twisting it and I'm pushing it in. And that's gonna hold all of the hair. So this is the wrong way. I'm holding this whole twist with my one finger and I'm putting the whole twist inside the bobby pin. Do you see how the bobby pin is just gonna fall right out? There's too much hair in there, first of all. Do you see where my finger is holding the hair? I just need to get that little section, the outer section right there, grab it with the little flick, and then I'm going to push it in like that. Hopefully you guys are still following along. It's kind of hard to teach. I don't know what the camera's actually picking up because the bobby pin is so small. But I'm just gonna show you a couple other ways that I like to use the bobby pins. So right now I'm just gonna do a Dutch braid. When I have a braid in my hair, I like to use a bobby pin to keep the flyaways down, keep the bubbles down, and also be able to stretch out the braid without loosening it too much. So what I do is I sweep the flyaways, and I did it really close to my head so that I could kind of see what I'm doing, but sweep the flyaways towards the seam of the braid. So if I lift this Dutch braid up, there's a seam running along right there. And I'm gonna take my bobby pin with the flat side on the bottom, and I'm just lighting it in. So the hair is being swept to the seam, I'm gonna push the bobby pin in, and now you can see that the Dutch braid is covering the pin. Now I can stretch this braid out, and it's not going to make the braid too loose because I've secured it. So that's one way that I like to use bobby pins is to help with flyaways, to help with bubbles, and to make it so that I can stretch my braids out really, really big, and you just slide them up through the seam. Another way that I like to use my bobby pins is crisscrossing them. So say I'm gonna do some space buns, I'm just gonna make my little space bun super fast. I'm gonna take my bobby pin, the flick is on the top, and I'm just gonna snag some of that hair from the bun and push it in to the bun. And then I'm gonna take another bobby pin, snag some hair and push it in, and I'm gonna make sure that these bobby pins crisscross, so they're, they're now crisscrossing, and that way, they are stronger together, so they're gonna be able to brace each other, hold on to each other, and they are not moving. This bun, even even though it's like fl flimsy because I didn't do it very good, it's not gonna move. It's stuck up there. <laughs> okay, and the last way is if you're putting your hair up into a messy bun, it can help you form the bun, and I wanna show you two different ways I like to do that. So, this is a really big bun. <laughs> the first way is I like to just kind of play around with these pieces. So I'm just sort of taking this and twisting it under, and then I'm pushing the bobby pin in. So the bobby pin on this one, the flat side is on the bottom. I'm just kind of rolling it under, and then I'm getting the hair. I'm snagging it with the flat side. So I'm snagging it with the flat side, and then just pushing it into the bun. Already looks so cute and you can't see the pins. But if I felt like they were gonna come out, I would do one more and hook on to that pin on the left so that now they're crisscrossing in the center so that it's a lot tighter and more secure. If that's confusing you, you could take your finger through one of these loops and just kind of pull it down towards the scalp and just put the bobby pin in like this. So the bobby pin is gonna go in like that, nothing special, you're just sliding it in, and the roll hides the bobby pin. Does that make sense? And if you're finding that the pins are still slipping out of your hair, you're buying the right bobby pins, you're putting them in the right way, 
chances are you probably just have really clean hair or really fine hair and that's okay you just need to use some product so spraying a texturizing spray or a dry shampoo is gonna add grit to the hair it's gonna make it easier for the bobby pins to hold on to and grip to so I've really been loving the Orbe dry texturizing spray Kenra and living proof also make a really great texturizing sprays as well and then a dry shampoo this is the same thing it's just gonna add a product to the hair that gives those bobby pins something to hang on to so if your hair is super fine the bobby pins just have nothing to hold on to it's just slipping out because it's like putting it in butter so you need to add some like grittiness to your hair in order to get the bobby pins to stick if the bobby pins are still slipping out one extra thing that you could do is hold your bobby pin out and just spray it with hairspray and then put it into the hair that's just gonna obviously make the bobby pin a little bit sticky and help it stick into your hair better and if you're still having issues and you can't get your bobby pins to hold maybe you just have the thickest heaviest hair in the whole wide world and in that case i am super jealous of you and you should just always wear your hair down and curly. <laughs> Maybe bobby pins just aren't your jam, but hopefully something in this video kind of clicked and gave you an aha moment. Maybe you have another trick to try. So if you finally get it, let me know in the comments below. I love to believe that I play a part in your happiness when you guys finally achieve like a hairstyle or learning a new trick. So that is the whole reason behind these videos. I just want you guys to love yourself and love having that confidence of knowing what you're doing with your hair. So let me know if you guys have any questions. If I missed anything, give this video a thumbs up and uh, I've been super chatty, so I'm gonna let you go. I love you very much and we'll see you in the next one. Bye guys. <laughs>